Hey, it's Francis Check from Video Realm Media, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to create this 3D scanning effect inside of After Effects. So you may be wondering, how is this possible, and how can you get depth from just using After Effects and Element 3D together? And the trick is to use something called photogrammetry. Basically what it is, is that you take a bunch of pictures of an object in the real world, and then you use software like 123D or Remake by Autodesk. And what it does is it gets all those pictures, combines them into a 3D model. So basically uses uh, depth from those pictures to create uh, an actual 3D mesh. So what I did is I just walked across in front of this shed right here and took a bunch of pictures, probably around 13, and it created a 3D model. All right, to get started, let's go ahead and import our footage. I have my footage right here, so I'll just click and drag this onto the new composition button and release. And now you can see we have our footage in this composition. And next I'm just going to trim it down to whatever I want. So maybe I'll start it from right here. Just kind of scroll through and find the point where we want. So right about there. And we'll bring this bar back. And we'll right click on this gray bar and trim comp to work area. And it should trim it just nicely for us. So the next thing we need to do is 3D track our footage. So let's go over to our tracker window and hit track camera. And this is going to analyze the footage just for a little bit. Okay, so now our footage is tracked. It looks really good. We have a lot of track points. And the first thing let's do is we'll actually right click on the ground, uh, wherever your ground is in the scene, and we'll click on set a ground plane and origin. So basically now this is going to be the flat area of your 3D scene. So this is the ground. All right, and then let's go over here. Let's right click and we'll create null and camera. Go over here, create null. Maybe a little over here, create null. Let's go back just a little bit and create null. So now we have all these nulls in the scene and they're all tracked onto this shed right here. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is add a new layer of element through D. So let's go up to layer, new, and solid. And we'll just label this as element through D. All right, there we go. And we'll scroll down in our effects and presets, get video copilot and element through D, drag that onto our element through D layer and we'll hit scene setup. Okay, so now that we're in element, you're gonna need to bring in the model that you scanned. Um, this can be using uh, 123D, Autodesk Remake, or any sort of program like that that can uh, create 3D models from pictures um, using photogrammetry. Okay, so here's the model of that shed. Um, this is just from taking those pictures. So basically what I did is when I took the pictures, I just took them all the way across and it converts it into this 3D model um, this is actually a poor example, usually it turns out better. Alright, so once you have your model loaded up into Element, let's go ahead and hit OK. And uh, now you'll see your model is floating inside of the ground. Um, and I don't think we want that, so <laughs> let's go ahead and fix that. So the first thing that we'll want to do is go over to our World Transform settings. And basically what we're going to do is we're just going to move this into place. So let me... Um, let me move this around real quick, maybe like this. I need to move it up. Let's go around here. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm just sort of tweaking it. Um, it'll pretty much turn out different every single time because of the 3D track points uh, that will throw it off. But basically you just have to line this up as best as you can. So it looks like right about here. And to make this a little easier lining up, what you can do is go into your group one settings and then go into your particle look and just lower the opacity a little bit. And uh, so you can kind of see how it's matching up now. So if we kind of scroll forward, we are having some issues down the road down here. Um, so let's go ahead and fix those. Looks like we need to probably move it back a little bit. All right, well, I've been tweaking it <laughs> for a little bit and it looks like this is probably about the best it's gonna get right here. So basically we have this 3D model overlaid our footage now. So we can go back up to our particle opacity and we'll just turn that up to 100% close out our particle look and there we go so let's go back into our scene setup okay so the first thing we're gonna want to do is turn our diffuse color to black and turn down our specular multiplier and environment multiplier all the way down to 0% so it should just be this sort of black silhouette now I created an illumination texture um, I actually made two of them so if I scale these up, you can kind of see what they look like. I can zoom in. It's basically like these little squares with these little squares in between with a little grid. 
Um, I will be including the project files for this, including the footage. We'll have to have element, but um, if you do, then these project files will be available to you on our website. All right, so let's bring in our texture for our illumination map. Okay, so you shouldn't see anything change right away, and that's because we have to scroll down and turn up our illumination intensity. So let's just crank this up really high, actually, and somewhere about there. So now you can actually see this texture sort of mapped on to this 3D model. So that's exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and click OK. And then we can just change the transfer mode to Add. So as you can see, we now have this sort of hovering grid over our entire building right here. And in photogrammetry, there may be a few little like uh, glitches in your mesh. So the easiest way to do that is if you have a 3D program like Blender or 3ds Max, ZBrush, anything like that. You can clean up the mesh a little bit and make it look a little bit nicer. Um, I didn't spend too much time on this one, but uh, it looks all right. Okay, by now you're probably wondering how in the world are we going to get that scanning effect? And it's actually pretty easy, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. Um, first off, let's get our Element 3D layer and let's duplicate it. Let's just solo this for a little bit. And let's go back into our scene setup. Set OK. And we're going to want to remove this illumination texture. So what we can do is scroll all the way down to our illumination settings and turn the intensity down to 0%. So now we just have the black silhouette again. And let's go ahead and hit OK. And then if you can't see anything, that's because it's black on black. So let's go ahead and click on the transparency grid. And now you can see that model is just floating and it's just tracked with our footage. It's exactly what we want. So let's go to our render settings and then fog. And let's enable fog and turn the color to white. We we'll also want our opacity to be at 100%. And here is what makes that scanning effect. It's fog fall of type, and we want that to be taper. So if we turn down the range to maybe something like 500, somewhere around there, and you start scrolling through, you're going to see that sort of scan effect. So this is what is going to be the lumumat for our textures. So basically what we'll want to do is let's move back in time. Let's bring down our star distance all the way back until we see no white on the model. And let's keyframe the star distance and move forward in time. And we want the fog to be stopping a little bit before the clip ends. Now let's just scroll forward and right until we don't see any more right about there. So now if we play this, you can see that we have this sort of mat. And this is what's going to be used as the luma mat. So the next thing we'll do is we'll just close out our fog settings and all that, and we will unsolo this layer. And it looks absolutely terrible right now. But let's go ahead and rename our second Element 3D Matte layer. So it'll be called Element 3D Matte. There we go. And let's go and shut it off, and we'll turn our Element 3D layer below it to Luma Matte. And basically, if we play this through, you can kind of see how it's creating that scan effect now. So that's basically how you do it. All right, so now let's go ahead and add in some color and some glow into this scanning effect. So I'm going to use Video Copilot's Color Vibrance plugin. Um, make sure to go download it. It's for free, and it's really awesome. And let's drag that onto our Element 3D layer. OK, so now we have this color on here. Um, we can pretty much change this, say, if you wanted more of like an orange or red scan to this. I mean, you can pretty much do anything. It's pretty awesome. So you can also use curves adjustment if you would prefer that. Uh, whatever you want to use to color it is fine. So let's go ahead and get it as close as we can to the color we want. So there's a light blue color. Looks pretty awesome, pretty futuristic. And let's go and play this through. All right, that looks pretty awesome. OK, well, let's go ahead and add some glow to this. So let's zoom in on this layer. Type in glow in our effects and presets. Just drag that right on top of here. And let's turn the original colors from our glow colors to A and B colors because we want to choose the type of glow and color. So we'll want this kind of spread out. So then let's get our glow and we'll turn this to like a darker blue color. Somewhere around there. Let's get this one. This one could just be a little bit lighter. Right about there. Okay, this is looking pretty good. Um, but there's actually an effect that you can apply to the mat. Uh, to make it look a little bit more organic. There's actually quite a few effects that you could use on this, but um, what I'm going to use is called Vector Blur. 
And I'm just gonna get this effect and we're gonna drag it onto our Element 3D mat. And if we increase this, you can see how it's sort of creating this liquid looking effect, especially if we go back into our Element 3D mat. Um, you can really see how it looks all like warped and it, it has this like bright line. It actually does look like a scan, especially if we look at this point like right here. And you'll just see how it makes that really nice scanning effect. Um, without it, it would just look like this and it looks pretty boring. It's just, yeah, it doesn't look so great. So adding a vector blur, um, you could also add something like turbulent displacement or even displacement maps. Um, but just play around with it and see what you can get at. All right, that's looking pretty good. Uh, one of the other things that we could actually do is we could actually animate the texture using the auxiliary animation channels inside of Element 3D. So what we'll do is let's go into our group one settings, auxiliary channels, channel one. And if we actually adjust one of the UV settings here, you can actually see how that's offsetting the entire texture. So we can either go up or down or however you would like. Um, one way to animate this quickly is to just hold Alt on your keyboard and click on the stopwatch. And we'll just type in time star 0 0.3. And the reason why this value is so low is because <laughs> these little sliders right here are extremely sensitive. And even if you set it to something like one, it's too quick, unless that's what you're going for. But even here, you'll be able to see the texture actually going up. And even that's pretty fast. So maybe we'll go to something like 0 0.1. All right, let's see how this looks. That's better. You're gonna see how it's flowing upwards and sort of scanning that way. You could also have it going in the direction that it's scanning. So that's always pretty awesome. If you don't like it in the direction it's going, you can always just set it to a negative value. So instead of going up, we could just type in negative 0.1, and now it'll actually be going down. So that really helps. It makes it look pretty awesome. Uh, just play around with it. You could do some pretty awesome stuff with it. There is one other thing we could do, and that is duplicating both of these layers and adding another texture so we can have sort of a secondary scan. Um, so let's go ahead and select those two layers and hit Control D. And now we have these other two layers. And we'll call it element second scan. Let's put second scan. All right, there we go. And let's go into our scene setup. And we're gonna make this texture look a little bit more distorted. And also change this sort of texture here. I actually created another one of these textures, but instead of squares, it's actually just a bunch of spheres with a grid. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that one in. Drop it on here. And maybe instead of having it so close together, um, I'll just scale it up in our UV settings. So you'll just select the model and I'll change this to one by one. There we go, looks pretty awesome. And we're gonna change the UV mapping settings from UV to plain YZ. So as you can see here, it's making this really awesome texture. If we animate this, you can sort of see it makes this really awesome <laughs> sort of scanning effect. It actually sort of looks like it's emitting from certain points. So it really adds this neat effect to the texture. And you can play around with these, even like Sphere or any of these other ones, um, just for creating that sort of distorted texture. Um, a lot of these just look really awesome. Actually, that's Polygon, so that's ridiculous. But <laughs> All right, let's just go ahead and select Plain YZ and leave it at that. So let's hit OK. And so now you can sort of see that texture uh, behind there. But what's neat is we can actually go in, click on our Element 3D second scan and second scan mat. And if we scroll forward, basically we'll just move these back in time. And so now we sort of have this different texture that's following this other one. So first it's not distorted. And then what's left behind is this sort of distorted scan. It looks pretty awesome. All right. Let's go ahead and play this back and see what it looks like. All right. Well, this is looking pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and add in some color correction above all of this in our footage. So let's go up to layer, new, and then adjustment layer. And we'll just hit enter and name this CC for color correction. And you can use whatever you want. I'm going to go ahead and use a curves adjustment. So I'll just drag this on. And I'm just going to start tweaking it just a little bit. All right, well, I just added a little bit of color correction. And I also added some chromatic aberration. And so now if we play this back, that looks pretty good. And like I said, you can just keep on tweaking the setting, um, getting new looks. 
and say if we didn't want this texture going up, maybe we wanted this one going down, this one going up, we can just go back into our element settings and change this from a negative value. So we just right click reveal in timeline. And if we click down, we can change this to a positive value. So now that texture will be actually going up instead of going down with this one. So it adds a little bit more variance and it looks pretty awesome. Here's another example I put together. Um, it's actually at one of these little truck unloading places and uh, if you play it forward you can kind of see that effect. Um, it looks pretty awesome actually. It did a really good job of scanning the environment. Um, so if we go into our 3D model settings and let's go ahead and replace this texture can see that's actually those truck ports I mean it's not perfect even got some of the side of the building too um, but just for this sort of scanning effect it really does work really well you can see the depth if you kind of just scroll through here um, but if you solo these layers you can really see what's going on here Chris is really awesome sort of distorted effect and this is also with animating the auxiliary animation and using the vector blur on the mats all right, well, that's it for this tutorial. And be sure to check out our website. We have some pretty awesome stuff going on there. Um, we have our two products, Fractalorama and Locust Pack. Basically what that is, is it's a collection of 10 3D models and a collection of 30 pre-rendered fractal stills that are rendered in 4K. It was inspired from the Star Trek in Darkness credits. So you can create some similar looking space scenes. They look really awesome. Combine Locust Pack and Fractalorama together. So if you ever wanted to create some really awesome looking space scenes, uh, be sure to check that out. All right, well, that's it for this video. Thanks for stopping by. And if it helped you and if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and like this video and comment if you have any questions. Also, be sure to check out our Twitter and Facebook page. I post there pretty often, post renders and that sort of thing. So if you like that sort of stuff, then please go check it out. All right, well, this has been Francis Check from Video Rail Media and have fun.